guys from from United Kingdom. You're watching Trucker Josh on TJV. sure what they're doing here oh I see they're they're cutting a new road through here so this road goes to the right and goes around the hill they're making a road that goes right over the hill I wonder how much money this is costing them and how much time is it actually gonna save commuters hey like watch you'll see we go around this side here it goes up there and it meets up with the same road around this little bend so it's gonna save us probably about 20 seconds how many millions of dollars do you think it cost to build that little shortcut? Here, I'll take you with me around this corner to show you. I remember this on the way to Ottawa. I was already shaking my head at it then. Like of, of all the projects that need to get done to make this highway safer and to make the commute through here better, they chose to spend their money on this. It really doesn't seem like a good use of money when there's other things that really need to be done. Like, maybe take the money and start widening the road or create a shoulder. Like, we can't even pull over on the shoulder of this road if we have a problem or if we have a tire blowout or if something happens. You can't get off the road. That shoulder there, I'll sink right into it and I'll need a tow truck to get back out. There's nowhere to stop. You have to go to the bathroom. You're technically not allowed to stop in these things off to the left. Apparently some guys uh, that I know of or my cousin, he knows some people that got in trouble for parking in one of them. So you're apparently not supposed to park in those even though everyone does. There's nowhere to stop. There's truck stops closing along the 17 and 11, left, right and center. So once a truck stop closes in this region, they block off their parking lot so that you can't park there. So all of us lose parking. So that doesn't help anybody. Because then we have even less places to stop. There's lots of things that we need to spend money on in this area of the country for the commute. I would love to see a four-lane highway all the way through here, though that's not really realistic for the next, I don't know, probably century. But, see, we went around that hill now. Oh, we got to stop here now. Oh, no, they're letting us through. And this is where it meets up again. So you see that little loop around the hill? They're just cutting off that little loop, saving us about... 20 to 30 seconds overall afterwards, after it's all said and done. Yet they had to cut through the rock to put this... I mean, I'm glad they're doing it. Like, that's something, yeah. But I, I just... Maybe I'm missing the whole reason why or the point of what makes it worthwhile, but... Sort of get what I mean, right? Here it comes out this way, and then you'll get to go straight through instead of going around a little bit. That is making it better. That is making it better. You can't lie about that. Just, these roads through here are so expensive to make because you gotta carve them out of the rock, right? And that's it. That's interesting. I mean, I'm not in charge of this kind of stuff for a reason. I, I'm no expert. There's obviously someone convinced someone to fork over a ton of money from the taxpayers for that. So th th there must be some good reason, right? You'd like to think there's some good reason. Other than saving 20 seconds. And we made it. We made it. And there's a scale up ahead here. Is it open? There's the Manitoba sign. Bienvenue. Well, thank you. Is it open? Where's this flashy light? No, it's closed. Ha! Good. I'm gonna pull in there anyways, cause I need to take a break. I'll pull into the scale if it's closed. Unless if they got people there. So if they got inspectors just hanging out there, I don't really want to show my face anywhere near them, give them an excuse to come over and say hi. So no, no, no one here. Good, good. So don't mind me. I'm just going to sneak in here, have a little break. I'm going to make sure that my break is on the other side of the actual scale so that I can just drive out if anybody does show up to open it. I'm not going to go over the scale. 
I'm gonna slowly drive past, see if there's anybody inside. And let's see, let's see. Nobody's home. Good, just the way I like it. So I'm gonna park past the scale here so that if I see any vehicles pull in and anyone walk into the office to open her up, I'm, I'm out of here. I passed the scale when it was closed. So we're just gonna put ourselves on duty here. Load check and tire check. Mark that in here that we checked our load. Don't need to idle the truck and waste money. We're gonna go out there and uh, check the load. Beautiful out here. You know, it's a lot warmer in Manitoba than it was in Ontario. That's for sure. All right, let's go take a look. Shall we? Yep, still there. Good, good, good. Now, you gotta make sure that uh, the chains are all still tight. You don't have to untarp it every time, but you have to go over each chain. If you know where the chains are, and check each one to make sure there's no slack in it. You can even reach your hands underneath there if you want. I'm just gonna go put some gloves on and then do that. And then check all the chains on all of here. Because there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve chains on this load. And I gotta make sure that all of them are still tight. You don't want one of these things falling off. Just one of them weighs almost 12,000 pounds. And we'll go around, do that to the other side as well. Make sure all the lights still work. Make sure we got no flat tires. And we'll be on the way. When you come into Manitoba from Ontario, or when you're about to hit the Ontario border from Manitoba, you hit this forested area. It's all protected forest. It's a white shell provincial forest. There is a lot of wildlife in these bushes. A lot. Almost every time you're guaranteed to at least see a few deer, at least. On an average day, you'll see a lot. So just keep your head up and your eyes on the road when you're in this section, be ready to hit the brakes or, you know, veer around. One thing I can give you some advice on if you're not in a truck, don't drive behind, beside a semi if you don't have to in sections like this. Because if a deer jumps out in front of me, I need that second lane beside me to get around it. And right, if I hit a deer, it's not gonna be pretty. <laughs> And it's probably gonna fling it out into your lane anyway, so you wanna get in front of me. If you wanna pass me, pass me. Don't take your time, get past me as fast as you can and get in front of me. Don't sit beside me. You can stay behind me too if you want. Don't tailgate, but just don't sit beside me. There's so many people who have their crews set at like one kilometer an hour faster than me in a car. I can understand if it's another semi who's governed, but cars, you can just hit the gas and go a little faster and get past them. Some people, they just like to drive right beside me. And some people will stay there, right beside my truck in the passing lane for like 15, 20 minutes if I don't do anything. If I slow down, they slow down. If I speed up, they speed up. It's like they need a little buddy, like they're lonely on the road. They need a travel buddy. I'm not your travel buddy. Get away from me. Stop driving beside me. I need that extra space. Thank you. Yeah, so far I haven't seen any deer here. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to show you on the vlog. But I can't be talking the whole time going through here either, because uh, you guys would get pretty bored of that. You know, it's probably a little early. They come out more so around twilight or around, like just after the sun goes below the horizon, that's when you'll see the most deer. Also when it's the hardest to see them, conveniently. Funny story. I had to stop by work here. Oh, I better not put it up there again. Uh, <laughs> I had to pick up a copy of the paperwork for this load I'm pulling because uh, I had my paperwork up here just to where I was about to put the second copy again. And uh, I'll show you here. I had it up there and I opened the window and it got sucked out in Northern Ontario and there's no place to pull over or park, which is very frustrating that they don't even have shoulders in Northern Ontario for emergencies like that. Cause I could have pulled over and walked back and picked it up, but nope, I had to keep going. So I called into the office and said, uh, I'm going to need a, another copy of that. Good thing I had taken a picture of it to send it in, uh, when I picked it up. So I just took that picture and sent it to them and said, can you print this off for me? Leave it in my mailbox. 
So I had to swing by work here to pick up a copy of the paperwork. Otherwise, I'd have no paperwork for this load that I'm pulling. Because it got sucked out the window. The weather was so nice, I wanted to have my windows open. What? Well, got my bed all set up. I know it seemed like a little bit of a short day, probably to you guys. Oh, but trust me, it was anything but short. It was a long day for me. We're in Brandon. That's all that matters. We made it. So I gotta go straight to bed now. Short night. Well, as short as legally possible. We'll be delivering this first thing tomorrow morning and then heading home to mow the lawn. Yay! I actually love mowing the lawn. I'm looking forward to it. But first, we have a whole bunch of errands to do on the way home. I was just gonna invite you up. Wait, I see you invited yourself up. I am the Lord of all weasels. I will invite myself up when I am ready. I was ready. You may be the Lord, but I'm still the king. You know how this works, right? Hierarchy. King. Lord. You get it? Lord of the weasels. Whatever you say, man. Whatever you say. I do what I want when I want. Because I'm the weasel. Won't even look at me, eh? <laughs> he knows he came up without being invited. Oh, you're okay, Diesel. You're okay. Oh, don't worry about it, buddy. I'm just tired, just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. He always asks per asks permission before coming up on the bed. Always. So if he comes up on the bed without asking permission like that, <laughs> he realizes what he's done. And he gets super guilty right away, especially if I tease him a little bit like that. <laughs> you always ask permission. He's a very polite lord. So I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Sorry, I didn't have much footage for you today. I hope that uh, it all turned out. I guess I'll find out once I put it together. But uh, tune in with me, uh, for me, with me here tomorrow. I promise I won't be as tired in the morning. I'll get my coffee and uh, we'll start the day. We'll have a good day. We'll go unload the steel. I don't want it anymore. It's weighing me down. Give it away to these people here. Get them to sign some papers and that'll be that. We'll see you tomorrow.